they come in in our mind is that a malicious software that is having a malicious intent so exactly this is the same definition that a malware is but actually malware is a family it is not uh, a single word it is a family where we put down different type of uh, category of the softwares or the scripts or something that are having a malicious intent uh, we will see lot of things and uh, uh, let me introduce my name is prashant saxena and i work for rrvpnl jaipur so what we will covering in this course today this uh, uh, i think 45 uh, minute session uh, we will be talking about malware uh, what type of malware is and uh, we will be talking about uh, generations of malware how many generation of malware we have seen uh, then we will be talk about uh, malware analysis i will be showing you some live malwares that how the keylogger uh, actually looks and uh, i will show you that how a malware is created how a malware is deployed and uh, ransomware i will also show that how uh, using the uh, simple python scripts you can create a malware then i will talk about little bit about the analysis of malware type of analysis whether it is a static analysis whether it is a dynamic analysis code review uh, then um, some behavior analysis topics we will also cover so malware is something that is not new to us okay uh, if you have seen a movie troy uh, in which uh, uh, when the the main character uh, he want to enter into uh, that uh, palace so he converted uh, into himself into a horse he wear a, a dress of a horse and then he entered inside the that palace so malware is something uh, that is looking legitimate but actually it is not so there are lot of definitions when we talk about virus virus has a different definition when we talk about trojan trojan has a different definition we have ransomware we have rootkit we have botnet uh, we have adware spyware crimeware so there is a family of uh, uh, such uh, scripts such softwares which have a same intent that is a malicious intent and definitely they will going to harm you and nowadays uh, it's like financial fraud is the major uh, aim and goal for these adversaries if we talk about if you like uh, if you are able to see on the screen in the generation 1 the the 1980s virus attacks uh, are uh, visible at, at that moment of time so at that moment of time you will see that the the motive is something different okay the motive is something different and at the, that moment of time uh, people are not uh, just targeting to uh, make your systems down or make your systems non working or steal your data it is having a different intent they are just uh, testing or they have a just uh, um, nature of job that they have okay but over the times the thing has really changed when the second generation of malware arrived so in this way we will see that uh, in generation wars hackers were typically uh, pranksters they are not having a dedicated uh, way to do all this so virus attack on stand alone pcs uh, actually happening on that time of day and at that time in 1980s internet is not on that verge so network based malwares are not there but when we move to the generation 2 in mid of uh, 1990s or something and when we have seen that internet started to become central to your business and it is uh, making a pivot role in our life so hackers began to organize and communicate among themselves laying the groundwork for cyber crime for financial gain and also malicious and volatile software began to crop up so in this way the second generation uh, came up and uh, this gave a rise to the first firewall along with the ids so uh, when we go back in the uh, networking devices uh, so in mid of the 1990s you will find that these devices firewalls and uh, uh, you can say ids are coming into picture uh, before that these devices are not there because internet is uh, just a technology it is, is it is not leveraged to everyone so in this way the second generation occurs 
then we have third generation in which uh, attackers began to analyze networks and software to find and exploit vulnerabilities so we will find that in 2000 early 2000 these vulnerability words are uh, discovered and the attackers have started uh, to exploit the vulnerability throughout the IT infrastructure whether it is your firewall and a uh, lot of other devices like uh, IPS IDS antivirus solution so these solution now coming into the picture and they are uh, basically insufficient to face the exploits so at that uh, point of time the best of the breed patchwork security models as uh, businesses are protecting themselves so lot of things have evolved and then we have entered into the generation 4 uh, where cyber attacks reached a new level of sophistication ranging from international espionage to massive breaches so we have seen that lot of breaches have uh, started reporting after if you say about 2010 before it there are not so much of breaches and uh, attack were hidden in everything from resumes to picture files uh, like uh, uh, executables are binded to pdf and and they are being transferred to you and uh, the files are being obfuscated so there are a lot of things so while internet security of the second and third generation provide access control and inspected all traffic it was incapable of validating actual end user content received in mail through the file downloads and more so the new devices are evolved and that moment of time we evolved with the anti-bot sandboxing products because the zero day attacks and also this is the time in 2010 or something these words zero day attacks and these are evolving and uh, now we are into the generation 5 we are around uh, large scale multi-vector mega attacks are happening advanced uh, weapon grade hacking tools are there uh, i think everyone is using this kali linux uh, and uh, meta exploit framework are there and a uh, lot of things are there and today i will be talking about uh, real malware how the real malware look how you can detect a malware so in this way you can see that uh, uh, the stages the generation is so evolved that uh, the changes are really uh, very exponential so now we are into the year 2023 and uh, currently we are in a generation 5 of a malware so what is a malware malware is an executable or a binary that is malicious in nature as we have already discussed a file or code typically delivered over a network that in fact explores steals or conducts virtually any behavior on attack is basically a malware so malware is a, not a single word it is a uh, very graceful word I would say uh, because you have to uh, handle these uh, files in, in, a, in a better way otherwise uh, things can be uh, really malice so we will be talking lot on things uh, malware if you see uh, is a device or I can say it is a software that uh, through which uh, uh, some malicious code or malicious script can be downloaded to some other person so that his personal credentials his identifiables can be captured or you can put down some software or put down some script on on your target system so that uh, you can have a reserve, uh, reverse tcp connection or something so these are the major tasks of a malware so malware is used by attackers to perform a variety of malicious actions like uh, spying on the target data exfiltration data encryption and destruction and destruction so if i say these are the three main areas where the malware usually works that is spying uh, second is your data exfiltration and third is your data encryption so in both of the in both of the cases of exfiltration and encryption your data is being uh, breached your data is being uh, logged by some encryption mechanism and in the spying is really a tough thing uh, for the uh, government or for the private sectors because your data is the uh, is the gold of the current time so we have to protect that data and spying can be something that will uh, destruct the image of the organization destruct the, uh, the 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 values of the organization if the if the data is being breached if you see the covid times uh, we have seen a lot of things uh, where these uh, manufacturing companies who are trying to uh, discover and uh, evolve uh, with this uh, vaccine and also lot of uh, issues we have faced at that time also 
so what are the basic type of malwares we will see first and then we will see that how these uh, malwares are created i will be creating uh, showing you a simple demo so a malware can black blackmail you a malware can steal your data a uh, malware can spam you with ads uh, a malware uh, can spread across your com computers malware is basically uh, trying to be a legitimate software but actually it is not uh, a malware can turn your pc into a zombie uh, let me give you an example for this zombie uh, i think most of the people are having a cctv camera at their home home okay so have you ever tried to uh, monitor the traffic that uh, that the ip cctv camera is doing okay so i have done with the many of the cases many of my clients and i found that uh, the cctv camera i am not going to mention the name uh, here but the cctv camera is actually connected to a c2 ip and uh, during the ddos attack it is also sending a packet to the target ip okay so in this way your small devices that are being installed at your home whether it is a alexa uh, whether it is a cctv camera even your smart tv can be a device uh, which can be infected and can be used uh, for the ddos attacks so there is an endless possibility of for any network device to become uh, a tool for an attacker so actually we we didn't know that what are the things that are happening in our network so as a cyber security professional so ek hindi mein badi kahawat hai ki pehle apne ghar se safai shuru karo so that's why i am saying try to find out and figure out the network issues at your home and i definitely say that you will find something okay so what are the type of malware uh, just have a small definition so malware refers to any binary or executable that is malicious however malware is sorted into further denomination based on their functionalities so although all the malwares have a same intention that is a malicious nature but some uh, keywords we have specifically uh, described uh, for different type of malware that is a trojan so trojan is basically a type of malware that is that actually it's illegitimate but it is trying to be legitimate okay also it can destroy and exfiltrate your data and can also be used for spying so generally when we are analyzing the malwares uh, we used to say that trojans are uh, softwares which can act as a ransomware sometime uh, if you if you see that the, there is a, a big panda uh, trojan but actually it is a uh, ransomware so actually they are not that much classified because jab the malware writing is writing in such a way so that you uh, you cannot target any specific type of keyword like it is a trojan or something but majorly the trojans are that that are uh, illegitimate software but are trying to be legitimate then we have a remote access trojans uh, basically these are the type of malware that allow the attacker to remotely access and execute commands on the system so these are the latest malwares that are evolving these days and uh, even with a simple metasploit framework uh, using a pdf payload see these type of uh, pdfs can be sent to you in form of your salary slip or in form of your some recruitment form or some job offer which can be used as some phishing attempt or smishing wishing or any social engineering product can be used to uh, deliver that malicious file to you so reverse tcp connection can be established using these rats then we have a ransomware where type of malwares that encrypt all files on the system we have seen lot of uh, ransomwares have uh, evolved in uh, last 2 uh, to 4 years and uh, even uh, com different community across the globe are fighting against this ransomware because uh, recently if you have heard about this that aims incident Uh, that is also ransomware and all the uh, data of the system where the billing was doing and all the diagnostic labs have just got shut down just because all the uh, data got encrypted then we have a dropper so dropper are uh, not directly as a malware but dropper are discovered to uh, hide from the uh, these uh, network security devices because dropper what what dropper is dropper is just a software that is coming into your network and it is not having any type of malicious signature and even it is not ha uh, having uh, any type of uh, uh, malicious activity or 
any type of malicious content so in that case uh, the firewall or the security device uh, will allow it to uh, install into your computer but once it is installed it will create a reverse tcp connection with the c2 ip and then it will uh, download that uh, uh, malicious software or that trojan in in the parts and once all the parts has came it just bundle it and just uh, push down into your systems memory or something so these different type of malware are and then we have rootkit and then we have botnets so rootkit is something uh, i think it is on the next slide notice so okay so rootkit is something that is being uh, uh installed in your system and it is already uh, executed before the, actually the system is getting boot up so at that time uh, detecting the rootkits is a different product botnets i have already told you that cctv camera example and all so these are the basic type of malware that are usually uh, in the markets and all so when we are talking about malware uh, everybody is using antivirus software for the malware detection but actually nowadays uh, malware detection is not uh, enough uh, by just uh, putting a antivirus software because sometime antivirus software is just uh, identifying the uh, activity uh, by the uh, by the malware that what type of activity is doing and earlier antivirus softwares are Uh, using the signature actually, so I will be uh, creating a malware in front of you today, and then we will be testing it on the VirusTotal.com. I think uh, all of the you are already aware about, about about the VirusTotal. It is a repository, and if you upload any malware sample to it, it will tell you that uh, uh, how much content is like uh, it is a malicious or not. So we will do it. Okay. So malware analysis is basically uh, science. It's a it's basically a uh, Study. It's a type of research in which uh, we do the reverse engineering of a malware. We found the. We try to found. Actually, we try because it's malware analysis is a little bit hard thing, and we always try to found the uh, lot of artifacts that are related to the malware. So, malware analysis is a process of analyzing a malware sample binary and extracted, uh, extracting as much information as possible from it. The information we extract help us understand the scope of functionality of a malware okay how the system was infected with the malware and how to defend against similar attacks in the future so nowadays uh, when we do the malware analysis uh, there are a lot of tools like pe studio and uh, cff explorer in which uh, once we are getting a malware and uh, we put down into the pe studio it is also giving you uh, that uh, um, malware attack id uh mitre attack is a framework that is uh, used to map down the tactic techniques and procedure for the adversary so they are uh, the tools uh, in like pe studio i will show you that how these uh, ids that attack ids can be useful okay so this malware analysis will help you out in analyze the malware that how the malware is affecting uh what's the question many software oems push trojan what are they yeah rajesh ji i will take your question i will take your question soon okay so what are the objectives of malware analysis to understand the type of malware and the entire scope of what because some malware will affect your shell backs some malware will will create some entries into the registries some malware will alter the registry values some malware will delete the uh, registry values sometime they uh, create some auto run func functionality so in this way different type of malwares have a different functionality and once we are doing the malware analysis it will help us to find out what type of functionality that malware is having and we try to get maximum out of it once you are doing a malware analysis it will help you out in finding the iocs IOC is means indicator of compromise because once you are creating a malware, basically uh, you are creating a malware in such a way so once it's got installed on the target machine, that machine um, is able to connect with you and you are able to connect with that machine. So definitely some domains, some IP addresses are there in the malware that are sometimes hard coded or sometimes not hard coded. So we have to analyze by using this malware analysis. 
देन हाउ द सिस्टम वॉज इन्फेक्टेड विद द मेलवेयर इज इट अ टारगेटेड अटैक और अ फिशिंग अटैक सो दीज टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन कैन बी आंसर्ड विद दिस मेलवेयर एनालिसिस देन हाउ इट कम्युनिकेट विद द अटैकर टू एक्सफिल्ट्रेट यूजफुल इंडिकेटर्स लाइक रजिस्ट्री एंट्री स्कीज एंड फाइल नेम्स फॉर द purpose generating signatures that can be used to detect future detection so these are the uh, major uh, motive of our malware analysis so basically we are doing four type of malware analysis we are doing four type of malware analysis that is a static analysis dynamic code analysis and behavior analysis what exactly we are doing in static analysis we are not executing the malware okay we are not executing the malware we are just trying to find the artifacts related to that malware that what is the hash value of a malware what are the strings available in the malware what are the attack ids available in the malware what are the what are the r data resource data section data uh, so there are different areas of malware so these uh, simple artifacts can be crack down with the static analysis then we have dynamic analysis so in dynamic analysis we actually execute a malware in a protected environment okay so this is uh, very important uh, remembered by word in a protective environment in a control environment because if you have not done the configuration well then that malware can affect your system also because that malware is designed to be malicious and if you are not taking proper care of your system then it can be risky so always uh, put uh, your uh, dynamic analysis into the virtual machines you can use uh, oracle uh, virtual box or vmware or hypervisor or any virtualization tool you have and you can deploy your operating system um, if uh, if it is a exe dll you can uh, deploy uh, your windows machine into the vms or if it is a linux you can use kali or something so it all depends on what type of malware if you are you uh, finding a dbm then you can go for a linux so dynamic analysis in which you are executing the malware really and uh, most of the times the real information is actually coming during the dynamic analysis only because static analysis will only guide you about little bit artifacts but once the dynamic analysis is done it will help you in finding the uh, real issues that is a uh, uh, going to be executed after the uh, execution of a malware like if a malware is a ransomware so after executing the uh, ransomware you will see that your uh, files starting getting corrupted or encrypted i would say and some messages are there so these type of uh, things you can uh, doing using the, uh, the dynamic analysis then we have a code analysis code analysis is basically uh, the machine level language is uh, you need to know the assembly language you need to know and there are some tools like gidra okay gidra is a very wonderful tool and it is it is converting the whole uh, executable into um, the assembly language and you have to understand that assembly language because end of the day when whenever a software is compli compiled it is going to the compiler in in form of a machine language okay so whether you are a uh, malware writer in a python or a c or c++ or ruby any language you write your malware but end of the day it is converting into the machine language where that mov jnj these commands are going to be used okay so that code analysis is a very important part so what what you can do i think most of the people have already uh, having a good experience of on malware analysis but uh, if you have a interest you can start with static analysis then you can move to the dynamic analysis and then you parallelly start uh, studying the assembly language and uh, 8051 uh, microcontrollers and all so that you can do the reverse engineering using the gidra so, and then we have a behavior analysis that how uh, the uh, things are changing how the power processes are changing because once a malware is being executed lot of processes are being created and uh, lot of registry entries as i have already told you so this is the way like behavior uh, uh, analysis can be done so this is a basic type of malware analysis okay uh, so this is very important thing uh, let me talk a little bit about you security guidelines keep your hypervisor updated hypervisor it can be your vmware it can be your oracle virtual box 
when executing malware ensure your network configuration is set to host only okay so in your network connection there is an option to host only network uh, do not uh, put on a net network okay in virtual machines there is option of net network so do not put otherwise your network of your virtual machine and your uh, local host of on, on your host machine can be shared and that uh, malware can transfer from your virtual machine to your host machine do not plug any usb machines uh, devices into your vm so never do that because sometimes it's very hard to uh, transfer the data from vm to uh, your host machine so don't do that you can use curl command in linux and uh, you can host in your host machine and you can use curl command to download the data make sure your at your download uh, compression password protected samples to avoid accidental execution uh, take snapshots every time you uh, run a malware before that you can take the snapshot so that you can have a uh, safety in case your whole um, VM got corrupted so it will help you out in recovering that VM. Do not store and store any valuable data on your analysis VM. Disable shared folders before execution or analysis. So these are the small things that you need to be taken care of. So now I will show you that how the real malware works and how you can get rid out of it okay so maybe a defense mechanism today we are not going to discuss on a very deeper scale because it's it's just an introductory session about the malware and we will be covering a deep malware analysis in future classes so i will be showing some of the tools so that you can have a better idea okay so let me go into my vm okay so um, is my uh, vm visible can you please confirm admin Yes, they're visible. Yeah. So uh, as you can see, uh, this is a malware. This is a malware tool. This is a malware that I have downloaded from uh, some of the website. And let, let me show you that it is a executable .exe. It means it is a, a Windows 32 a self extractor. And when I actually execute it, it will do something into my system. So once I executing the malware, it means it is a dynamic analysis. And once I am trying to figure out the artifacts related to this malware, then it is called it as a static analysis. So we have a tool today. Uh, we will be using PE Studio. Okay, PE Studio is a tool and it is freely available. It's an open source tool. You can download from the internet. And uh, if you need, I will show you the link. So this is a wonderful tool. And if you want to analyze, just uh, drag and drop this malware into it and it will start working okay sometime it will take a minute or a two because it will analyze the whole malware so you can see uh, i will show you uh, all of the things but basic basically what it is there in virus total uh, i think most of the people are already aware, uh, aware that virus total is a repository where uh, the hashes or malwares can be injected and uh, they, uh, we can pr provide our malware to virus total and, and it will analyze and give the results okay so if you will see that 54 vendors out of 71 are declaring it as a malware okay so basically what pe studio is already uh, having a collaboration with this uh, virus total using a api so whenever we put down some malware in uh, this pe studio it is pushing to the uh, virus total server and virus total server is sharing that uh, reports with you so what are the different uh, options we are having so it will taking a little bit time so let us wait for it and uh, as you can see uh, there are uh, actually everything is it, it will take time no issues no issues so uh, these are the different malware uh, samples like AI detect malware, Trojan malicious, Trojan MSIL, Trojan generic. So these are the name of a malware. And uh, one important thing is that, that whenever you uh, upload a, a sample uh, to the virus total, it will be uh, checking that uh, malware sample basis on the hash value. Okay. So there is a tool uh, you can use hash calc okay hash calc is a tool and for using that tool you can actually find the hash value of a uh, of a particular file okay so uh, hash calc i think it will be visible so you can directly uh, inject the file uh, let me inject a normal executable 
ओके लेट अस इंजेक्ट दिस कर्नल थर्टी टू डॉट ई एंड वी विल कैलकुलेट ओके सो व्हाट एक्जैक्टली इज दीज आर द डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ एनक्रिप्शन एलगोरिथम्स एम डी फाइव शाह वन शाह टू फिफ्टी सिक्स आई थिंक यू आर अवेयर अबाउट ऑल दीज एनक्रिप्शन एलगोरिथम्स एंड दीज एनक्रिप्शन एलगोरिथम्स विल क्रिएटिंग अ यूनिक सिग्नेचर वैल्यू फॉर दिस फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर एग्जीक्यूटिबल फाइल वी आर नॉट सेइंग दैट दिस एग्जीक्यूटिबल फाइल इज अ मेलवेयर और नॉट but we can check this executable file um, onto the virus total using this hash value so what i will do i will go to virus total dot com so it is giving you option actually to choose the file or you can search the hash value directly so in this case i am putting the hash value directly and i will search whether it is a malware or not okay so what is happening this file is also a malware and a lot of vendors are declaring it as a as a malware so you can see around 15 vendors out of 72 are declaring it as a, as a malware so you can use this uh, fingerprinting so if you if you have received any file uh, through the mail or something so what first attempt you can do you can just uh, find out the uh, hash value uh, whether it is md5 sha1 sha256 and put down into the virus total and check uh, that whether it is a it's a malware or not so it is not a guaranteed but most of the times uh, these uh, uh, malware analyst are uh, uh, submitting lot of samples into the uh, this uh, Uh, virus total so if you can see actually this is the the sample that i have uploaded 7 hours ago okay so this is my own sample this is my own malware kernel 32.txt i am the author of this malware and uh, this sample is you can see uh, submitted at 7 hours okay okay and so and morning 6:41 i have submitted this sample so mm, let us go back to the vm i think that execution work has done yeah so lot of uh, values are there so you can see uh, these uh, hash values are there sha256 hash values are there so basically these are the fingerprint values uh, then we have lot of stump uh, these uh, compiler related information that what compiler is used for creating the malware uh, then we have some uh, optional headers that what are the type of sections the malware is having what is the entry point that section dot tx dot tx is the entry point then uh, how much what are the size of different images so once you are you want to have started to learn the malware because malware analysis is something you will have to invest lot of time invest lot of energy into it so you can use these tools basically so i am not uh, giving you a, a deep uh, uh, like uh, overview of the tools i am just helping you and making you people aware that these are the tools available uh, using that you can uh, use all this so actually it's taking lot of time why because uh, it is uh, in a vm and i have restricted uh, my vm network to some bandwidth like only 50 kbps or something because in case an execution happens or accidentally so at least data exfiltration did not place okay so this is like a basic uh, malware analysis you can do second uh, let me show you so these are some ransomware so i have uh, des designed some ransomware so i will show you that how how exactly the ransomware works so what exactly a ransomware is ransomware is something that come down into your pc uh, make your system uh, files encrypted and most of the times they drop a message into your system that your files is being encrypted and you need to pay this amount of money in a in in a form of a cryptocurrency okay so this uh, type of analogy is usually happening and once you give money uh, to the uh, 
टू द मेलवेयर राइटर और समथिंग देन ही विल सेंड यू द डिक्रिप्शन की सो दिस इज द रूटीन अ सिंपल प्रोसेस ऑल दो देर आर लॉट ऑफ अदर थिंग्स ऑल्सो लाइक ऑफ सेट एंड प्री लोडर्स एंड लॉट ऑफ अदर टेक्निकल जार्गन्स आर देयर बट आई एम मेकिंग यू पीपल अंडरस्टैंड रैनसम वेयर इन अ वेरी सिंपल वे ओके सो वॉट आई हैव डन आई हैव जस्ट राइट राइटेड आउट सम पाइथन प्रोग्राम्स एंड दे आर बेसिकली एक्टिंग एज अ एनक्रिप्टर एंड डी क्रिप्टर फॉर माई फॉर माई सिस्टम ओके सो एज यू कैन सी वॉट आई एम डूइंग इज आई एम यूजिंग अ पर्टिकुलर प्रोग्राम फ्रॉम अ टारगेट डायरेक्टरी एंड फॉर एवरी एनक्रिप्शन यू नीड टू हैव अ की सो दिस की इज ऑल्सो जनरेटेड यूजिंग दिस प्रोग्राम बिकॉज वंस यू नीड टू पुट डाउन द डी क्रिप्टर यू नीड अगेन अ की सो मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम्स आई फाउंड दैट द रैनसम वेयर पीपल पुट डाउन अ की इन अस इन अ सीक्रेट प्लेस इन योर ओन सिस्टम ओनली okay then a simple message so these are the uh, this is simple program that i have created in python so let us uh, give you a demo about it that how exactly it is working okay so this is the data actually i have designed uh, my uh, program in such a way that this data folder will be encrypted okay so what is happening uh, there are two files here uh, one is a encryption and one is a decryption so i have compiled that python file python code into executable and once once i run this file encryption.exe it will encrypt my whole data that is basically in this folder okay in this data folder okay so let me run this okay so this is executed now how this file is going to be sent you can obfuscate any pdf and attach this executable with it and once the person is receiving that pdf and once it is executing that pdf in backend this this encryption file will automatically execute so there are different type of met methodology for delivery of the payload so that is a different thing so you can see that whole of the data in this folder is being encrypted okay all of the data is uh, like dot doch dot saxena so i have uh, put down a special um, file name extension uh, with my surname only dot saxena and it is also giving you a message welcome your data is now hacked please pay 100 usd to get back your data <laughs> and please contact this after payment so usually this is happening uh, when we are when we are seeing the uh, malware attacks and all okay and if you pay the data to that person probably he can give you the decryption key so let me run this decryption key now come back to this so all the data is again decrypted so in this way you can see that how the malware writers are writing these code so this is a very simple code of uh, ransomware so uh, other apart from it uh, there is lot of other functionality like uh, uh, connecting with the c2 server reverse tcp connection and uh, shell scripting and all uh, putting the registry values so these are uh, different type of uh, functionality that a malware is giving again a second type of malware that uh, i'm going to show you is keylogger okay so keylogger everybody knows whatever you type uh, in your uh, system is being logged uh, by the uh, by the keylogger so if you see my previous example of ransomware even my defender is also working okay you can see my defender is perfectly working and i am having a good malware bytes running on my system okay but still these antiviruses are not able to catch my malware because i have designed in such a way that it can evade the security of a antivirus so let me show you a demo for the keylogger okay so this is again a simple keylogger code and what i am going to show you in this specifically keylogger code is 
that this uh, will create this file with this uh, execution will create a specifically registry value okay and registry value that will execute the program again and again whenever you restart your system okay so if you see that uh, the program is designed in such a way this keylogger that when once i have uh, gone to someone's computer or i have using uh, used a payload to deliver this mechanism this executable with a pdf or someone or, or something and once this programming program is being executed the his system is directly um, in association with me and all the key strokes he is typing is being recorded and every time his system is running uh, the the key logger is automatically uh, starting so you can see uh, i will show you just a minute i'm just uh, looking for that registry value okay so this is the registry value it is there also i have created in such a way that uh, you can push this data using the ftp okay so file transfer protocol and using this uh, file transfer protocol uh, this this keylogger can push the data okay so these are the things uh, that usually uh, happening with the malwares and uh, i think so again the, uh, i have put down this registry key values so it will add a registry key and uh, also it will uh, push the uh, data onto the ftp server so let me uh, run this okay so i have put down this file here this kernel 32.exe so i will just run it and it will run silently because during the compilation i have uh, used the keyword hyphen no console so once you are compiling a python into an executable and you are using no console so there is very silent execution of this type of files are working and if you go to task manager and try to find out the processes you will just see a simple kernel 32.exe okay so no such file is uh, there which can be looking malicious until unless you have this i i need to change this icon for this kernel data too okay so i can use that dll icon also so whatever i am typing let us suppose i want to open my gmail Okay, so whatever I am typing, typing it is uh, getting recorded uh, into the backend in a specific file, and uh, just go to down and just see the timestamps. Okay, I have just opened Gmail with uh, a button key enter. I have done. Then I have typed my email ID as you can see. so in this way uh, you can see these simple key loggers can be a part of your system and you are just unaware about it okay so this is just a demo that how the key loggers and ransomwares are working then we have some c2 based servers uh, this is also a c2 based server but uh, i think uh, i am running out of time so i am not going to discuss this right now so malware is something it's it's a very vast area of study and as uh, most of the people are from uh, cyber security they are the cyber security professional students enthusiasts so try to make out uh, your efforts into the malware analysis because it will help you out in unfolding uh, the part of the cyber security which is really need a uh, urgent intervention of the professors like you so uh, this is uh, like a never ending session i can speak more than 5 to 6 hours on this because this is a very last topic large topic and lot of things are there so if there are any questions i would like to take because they have given me 50 minutes to speak and i think so i have already covered 50 minutes and one thing i want to show here 
um, I think it is it has done his execution it is showing you the all the hash values uh, sorry as, for uh, interruption sir so yeah. you actually have a time still uh, yeah so it's 748 you have few minutes more yeah yeah but sir, I have just finished I am just showing want to show one thing yes sir, definitely you can continue with your execution sir uh, just I am showing one thing So uh, as you have seen, uh, it is uh, recorded some 47,566 strings. So these are the strings that the malware is using and these are the different values. And as you can see, you have a, you can see this technique T1055 process injection, T1134 access token manipulation. So by this you can find that what are the targets for a malware what are the techniques that the malware is using so when when so if you have a understand of uh, understandability of the mitre attack framework so it is mapping your malware activities with that framework so if once you got the activities you can uh, definitely make uh, your malware uh, find that it is associated with which apt group actually so uh, you, you can do like that so i'm just stopping my session here and opening the podium for the questions please uh yes sir, it was indeed a very good session uh, we too short of time we are running out but uh, we will definitely have a master class also for our members soon yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, so we have few questions there from Somya. Let how to identify that the keylogger is inside our system. See, it all depends on the type of uh, author that how he has designed. So if you if your keylogger is using a FTP mode to pushing the data, so definitely you will find some FTP connections. So you have to detect your FTP connection. Second way for keylogger to push the data is using the SMTP and in Python there is a library SMTP lib in, uh, through which uh, a writer can push the uh, keystrokes whenever you type A here the A will be uh, sending using an email or something or it will uh, schedule something that after each half an hour that file will be sended to this C2 IP. So it all depends on what type of strategy, but most of the times SMTP or uh, this FTP and sometimes uh, even they are using nowadays DNS queries. So what, what exactly uh, DNS queries is, they are, uh, they are uh, embedding the keystrokes, important keystrokes in the form of a DNS query because DNS queries are something they are not that much detectable and even uh, you do not uh, you you have a trust on DNS queries that that even if you are uh, diagnosing the network so you can easily um, make them allow okay just it is just a DNS query so it all depends on what type of strategy the malware attack is doing is it fine Lakshmi uh, I think who has asked this question uh, Soumya Shri yeah. So yeah, Lakshmi is asking what are other tools for finding hash calculate hash values rather than hash calc. There are a lot of open source tools nowadays and even you can write your own simple Python Python script for that. So this is not a big task. And lot of tools are there. Even Windows Sys internals is also giving a utility to find the hash value. Or you can put down directly into the uh, you can directly submit a sample to virus total, it will give you all the details of hash value. Uh, next question is from Ajendra sir. Uh, many softwares, okay, I think that uh, has been taken, right? Many softwares OEMs push Trojans. What are they? Sir, that is basically an issue of a supply chain management. So nowadays, supply chain management is becoming a critical issue. And uh, definitely, these issues are being taken by the uh, vendors now directly by them. Uh, any more questions? 